Welcome to the Museum of Artifacts that Made America and the story of how an ordinary audio tape recorder helped take down a president. Let's rewind to 1971. Three years into his presidency, Richard Nixon made one of the shrewdest or most foolish decisions of any U.S. president. He ordered the Secret Service to install a new recording system at the White House. Nixon said that by recording conversations he had in his offices, the tapes would protect him from being misquoted. He wasn't the first to record his presidency for posterity. The tradition began decades earlier, when Franklin D. Roosevelt started to record events during the Second World War to make sure he was quoted correctly. But Nixon's system was unlike anything the White House had seen before. Tiny microphones hidden away under desks and in lamp fixtures picked up every conversation. In the Oval Office, the Cabinet Room, the Lincoln Sitting Room, and even at Camp David. Most important of all, much of the system was sound activated so that when someone spoke or there was a noise, the tapes began to record. Everything was captured on an open reel tape recorder stored in a locked metal cabinet. When the tapes had been filled, Secret Service agents would lock them away for safekeeping at the executive office building next door. Between 1971 and 1973, Nixon secretly recorded approximately 3,700 hours of high-level conversations and government meetings. No presidency had been recorded in such detail before. Yet the tapes didn't end up protecting the president. In fact, they had the opposite effect. When the story broke that Nixon had been implicated in the cover-up of the Watergate break-in, Congress discovered that approximately 18 minutes had been deleted from the tapes. A sure sign, many felt, of the president's guilt. Ultimately, Nixon resigned from office before he could be impeached. The tapes are now held at the Richard Nixon Library and Museum in California. How do you think the Watergate scandal affects modern politics? <laughs>